on, Monty. On this episode... I know you don't want your pets to suffer at all. Andrew must make a life and death decision on a close friend's pet farm animal. He looks so uncomfortable today that I think, unfortunately, this might be the end. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Ralph. Rachel investigates why a friendly young Labrador has developed a worrying limp. Couldn't feel anything okay. and he's had no reaction to it. So my greatest concern for a lameness in a puppy would be fractures to the bones. But can she calm her terrified patient down enough to even treat him? Hey guys, feel good. I just really love animals. Hey mate, good boy. And I love the joy they bring to our lives. There's blood all over it dripping down. But first on this episode. You can see Rosa definitely looks like a pretty nasty growth. Someone can hold her. I have to do this surgery out in the field because of Cindy's welfare. She would get really, really stressed coming into the vet hospital. It's all ulcerated and open to the sun and the flies. I think we've got a pretty big surgery on today. Ash, I've got a job on the farm. Will you please join me? Sure, no worries. In the Australian rural town of Ulladulla, Andrew has asked Nurse Ash to assist him for a job on a property 15 minutes from the vet clinic. Just had a call from Farmer Ross. He's really worried about one of his sheep. Okay, what's wrong with it? He said he's found a lump on it that he just noticed. Oh, poor baby. I hope there's nothing too serious. G'day, Ross. Andrew. How are you going? All right, I've got a ewe with quite a growth on its leg. Okay. And um, it's actually quite pronounced. Yep. And the ewes lost a little bit of condition. My sheep are very, very important to me. I've moved into sheep about three years ago and I find the sheep quite rewarding because the basis of farming is actually having lambs and produce an animal. I enjoy that. You'll see that the ewes got a lump. I've just been keeping an eye on it, but I've, over the last couple of weeks, I've just noticed that she started losing a little bit of weight. Okay. How old is she, Ross? Uh, she'd be an older you, so she's oh. probably about five or six years. Yeah, sure. What's her name? Cindy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Turning up to the property today, I can notice the lump straight away. It's bleeding. It's much bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's at least the size of a tennis ball. It's dangling a fair way off the leg, and I think we've got a pretty big surgery on today. We'll just open all these gates yep. here, so it comes around here. Straight into this. Into the crush. Yep, for sure. Okay. But to surgically remove the lump, Ash can grab a gate with us as well. Yeah, you can close that one then. Andrew, Ross and Ash need to round up Cindy. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. She should come round now. But that's not as simple as it sounds. Where is she? She's over here. Oh, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll walk around. OK, open her up. Hello, open the next one. Sometimes catching a sheep can take ages. Push, doesn't matter. Okay, three go, three go, three go, three go, three go. Come on. We've got a gate each, and hopefully it'll go really smoothly. Come on, up you go, up, up, up. Close. Three go. Come on. Close. Okay. <laughs> and normally I'm doing this by myself. With Cindy now in a confined space. Hello. Andrew can get a better look at a problem that needs urgent attention. You can see Ross, it definitely looks like a pretty nasty growth. Yeah. It's all ulcerated yeah. and open to the sun and the flies, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So yeah. it does appear that it's actually a growth. We shouldn't be there, definitely. Right. So I think it's best if we remove it, remove it and then we'll send it off to the laboratory for a biopsy. Okay. And try and work it's out concerning news for Ross. Recently, one of his sheep with an identical condition to Cindy died. I had a ewe with a similar lump and we did get the biopsy back and it was a tumour, it was cancerous and unfortunately it was quite an extensive operation and the ewe lived for a little bit afterwards but the wound actually uh, opened up. I think it's best if we work out exactly what's going on. Okay, fair enough. Come on, come on. 
John and Deb have brought their Labrador puppy Ralph to Come the on. clinic, worried about a limp the five-month-old has developed. Come on. Ralph, been with us now for three and a half months, and you really become connected. So once something you feel is wrong, it really becomes very important to you to bring him to the vet and get some investigation. I hope you're going to be okay. Hi, John and Deb. How are you going? Hi there. Hello, Ralph. Hello, beautiful boy. Good to see you again. Come on in. Rachel has been Ralph's vet since he became a part of John and Deb's family as a lively six-week-old. Hello, my beautiful boy. Labrador puppy is definitely one of the cuter breeds. That's why they're all over the commercials. So Ralph is a very popular boy around here. And uh, yeah, he's definitely one of my favorite patients. All right, so Ralph's having some trouble with, with his legs, yeah, is that right? Yeah, we've noticed the last two weeks, uh, now and again, he's limping when he walks okay. on the front. The front. It doesn't happen all the time, yeah. but it's just steadily getting that little bit more and more. Okay, no worries. So what I'll do is I'll give Ralph a little bit of an examination and see if I can find anything which might be explaining it. Yeah. Hey buddy, good boy. That's fine. Heart sounds all fine mm -hmm. and his teeth are good and his eyes and his ears are good. So I'll check out his legs now. Okay. Yeah, we did wonder if maybe there was something inside one of his paws. In the feet? Yeah. Couldn't the feel anything. Couldn't feel okay. anything. Yep. We've checked around his arms and such just to find out how it feels and he's had no reaction to it. So my greatest concern for a lameness in a puppy would be fractures to the bones. Their bones can be quite soft when they're young, more prone to breaking than when they're older. No, you're not giving me much there, are you, Ralph? But you said he wasn't limping today, so yeah. might not be flared up today. Ralph is showing little indication of discomfort in his left leg. Good boy. So Rachel shifts her focus to the placid puppy's right side. A little bit of a reaction around there. Nothing too dramatic. Performing a musculoskeletal exam on his front legs, just having a good feel for any swellings, any sources of pain, and manipulating his joints to see if there's any pain when his joints are moved around. I didn't find anything too major. So I think probably what we'd like to do is take some x-rays of those legs, especially those front legs. So I'll get you to leave Ralph with me for a few hours. Um, we'll sedate him. So we always take our x-rays under sedation so they lie nice yep. and still, even though you're doing that right now, Ralph. And once I've got the results, I'll get you back in and I'll have a talk through them with you. Okay. okay. Lovely, thank you. All right, Ralph, coming with me for the day. You yeah. won't mind, will you? No, not at all. <laughs> I feel a, a bit worried, but once we find out the results, there'll be a relief. Uh, so I think it was the right decision to come to the vet and just get the first starting investigation and hopefully everything works out. All right, we'll see you a bit later on. Thank you. No worries. This way, Ralph. I'm going to give Cindy a sedation first, mm -hmm. and then we can have a really close look at it okay. and clip it up and have a look. Okay. 15 minutes from the clinic, Andrew is about to operate on Farmer Ross's Wiltshire pole sheep, Cindy, to remove a lump that looks suspiciously like cancer. The injection of sedative it takes a few minutes to work, yep. but she'll get nice and sleepy, mm -hmm. and then we'll bring her out into the open space yeah. on the cleaner grass, the cleaner. and we'll have a closer look. Okay. Is that okay? Rob, no problems. As soon as Cindy's in the yards, I can notice that the lump is really bothering her. The flies are everywhere. There's blood all over it dripping down. So I think it's best that we get it off as soon as possible. Someone can hold her. Ash, you're Ash, up. Yep. Oh, yep. Here, right. Ashy, here, you get in there. There we go. Good, Good girl, girl, Cindy. Come on, here we come. Thank you. Thank you. So this will just take a few minutes to work yeah, Ross, that's and okay. um, we'll bring her over here into the shade. As soon as we let Cindy into the grassy yard, I can see the sedatives taking effect. She starts to get a little bit stumbly and I'll get everything ready and then we'll start the job pretty soon. Starting to get a little bit sleepy now. She's putting her head down towards the ground and she's getting a little bit wobbly as well. She's down now, so let's go for it. I'm going to tip her onto her back 
and then I'll take it that way. Okay, Ash, I'll just drag like that. Yeah, that's it. There you go. Good girl. Ready to go. There is a fair bit of dried blood around though, mm -hmm, which is what mm -hmm. the actual flies are yeah. attracted to. Yeah. So that's why I'm going to clip it a little bit bigger okay. up and down the leg. Yep. Good girl. I have to do this surgery out in the field because of Cindy's welfare. She would get really, really stressed coming into the vet hospital. They don't travel particularly well sheep. It's not easy doing these procedures out in the field. It's much easier to operate in the sterile surgery. Out here we've got flies, we've got the sun, we've got wind, and it's a pretty dirty situation. But we don't have a choice when it comes to these things. So it's definitely great having Ash with me today to hold the lead back, keep the flies off, and pass me things when I need to. Just going to infiltrate the area with local anaesthetic mm -hmm. Ross, mm -hmm. so she won't feel anything. We've just got to work pretty quickly now so the sedation doesn't wear off. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to make a scalpel incision mm -hmm. and just remove the lump. There might be a little bit of blood though. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. You okay? Not going to faint? No. Nope. You're right. You're right, Ash. Yep. There's a bit of blood there. So we'll tie off that bleeder. Just get the lump out of the way for mm -hmm. now, so mm -hmm. we'll send it off to the later. Mm -hmm. Flies are the biggest risk with this later on, mm -hmm. so we're going to spray it with an antiseptic fly spray. Mm -hmm. All right, Cindy, good girl. We're almost there. You can give her a little extra pat. Me, oh, Ash. No. Now it's just for some final skin sutures to make the wound nice and closed. Having already lost one of his flock after surgery to remove a lump, Ross seeks assurance Cindy won't suffer the same fate. So when she puts pressure on that, Andrew, she, they won't open up again? No, they? it shouldn't, Ross. Shouldn't, yeah, well. yeah. We'll do everything we can to yeah. make sure that that doesn't A lot happen. of uh, rain coming on Monday. There? Yeah. yeah, sure. To me, this lump looks pretty sinister. It's bloody, it's covered in flies, and it just definitely can't be good for Cindy. I'm just going to remove a section of the lump and pop that into the pot for the specialist pathologist to examine. The best scenario is that the lump is a benign mass, which means a tumour that's not spread anywhere else in the body. Good girl, Cind. Well done, we're over. Sweetie, you all right? No? There you go, ready? Up again, up again. There you go, sweetie. Oh, good girl, she'll probably stagger a little bit yeah. for a few minutes, but she's pretty strong on her legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always good to see them running off like that. So I think it's a great result, Ross. I'm hopeful that he recovers, but looking at that tumour today, my experience tells me that it may not. Oh, thanks, Andrew. Yeah, no thanks, thanks for all your help. Very welcome. Thanks, Ashley. You're welcome. It was your, lovely meeting yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I think the assistant. surgery went really well, yeah. so I'll send it off to the lab, and as soon as we get the results back, I'll give you a call. Okay. All right. No, so. thanks for that. Thank you very much. Yeah. And let's keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers yes. crossed. Yeah. No worries. I mean, Andrew's a terrific pet. And the most important thing is actually relieving any pain and discomfort for the animal. And uh, the operation today has done that. Here we go, come on, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Come on, good boy. This way, good boy. Back at the clinic, Rachel is taking Ralph on a meet and greet tour before x-raying the friendly puppy to see why he's recently started limping. <laughs> oh, he's so goofy. So we did take him for a little bit of a wander around before we proceeded with the x-rays. He was a very happy boy, very excited, loves to say hi to everyone. He's especially popular with the ladies. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Ralph. Ralph loves it at the vets. He's full of energy, full of beans, happy to see everyone. Good boy. There weren't any obvious signs of limping, which is good, because I think if we had something more serious, like a broken bone, he would certainly be limping. Come on, Ralphie. Good boy. This way. In here, mate. Come on. Oh, you don't want to come in. Oh, there's a good Ralph. There's a good Ralph. So our next step really to investigate this would be to take some radiographs, some x-rays, and have a look and see if we can find any problems on there. Good boy. I know, you don't want to sit still, do you? But while the energetic puppy was only too pleased to press the flesh outside the x-ray room, he's not too happy about what's coming next. Get a second set of hands. 
Right now, Ralph is not that keen on sitting still. He's not that keen on the restraint for his sedation. So as soon as he knew we were trying to do something to him, he was not so keen on it. But we need him sedated so that he lies really nice and still for those x-rays and so that we can get some really good images. Sometimes we'll use treats and things like that to try and get them to be a bit more happy with the restraint, but we can't give him treats because we're about to give him a sedation, so he should have an empty stomach. Without the x-rays, there's no way of finding out what's causing the frisky five-month-old to limp. He's not going to lie still on his own, I don't think. We don't want to stress you out. Hey, that's not our aim here, is it? morning we're off to the property of my receptionist Selena. All right, well we'll see you this afternoon at 2.15. She's called me to check out her old bull. He's been hand raised by Selena. She considers him more like a pet. After dropping Nurse Ash back at the clinic, Andrew is on his way to a patient he's treated for several years, but whose health is rapidly declining. He's quite elderly at 17 years of age and he's been struggling to get around, slow in getting up. I think he probably has arthritis and there could be a few tears. There she is. G'day Selena. How are you doing? Not too bad. Thank you for coming. Do you go and have a look? Yes. We got Monty at six months old, his mother died, and we hand raised him. And obviously when you hand raise a young animal, they're part of your family. We got him just as my daughter was born, who's now 17, and my son is 19, so he's been raised as their pet. Whereabouts is Monty at the moment? He's just down behind that shed, Andrew. Okay, I'll just have a look. grab his halter and yeah. lead there. He's always been a character. He thinks he's the horse, so he had many times he'd put himself into their stables. He's always shared the paddock with the horses and become their soulmate. In the last few months, he started to go in his legs and in his back. He's starting to suffer in his health and we need to think of him. He has been up this morning, but I notice he has gone back down. He's spending more time down on the ground than up. When he tries to get up, does he actually struggle? Or yeah, oh, he... absolutely. Oh, okay. it takes him a long time to get up. Okay. Going into the paddock and seeing Monty, he's down on the ground, unfortunately. It looks like he's exhausted and he just doesn't want to move. Well, they're a low line breed, but they should yeah. be a bit higher off the ground than that. Exactly. He is a bit shy, so yeah. he would normally just get up and walk away from us. Hey, mate. The first thing I notice is how slow he is actually getting up. Yeah, you can see yeah. he sort of stumbles a few times and seems very stiff in getting up. Yeah, yeah. And the joints are obviously swollen compared to how they normally would be, Absolutely. which is a real classic sign of arthritis. Yeah. You can see in his knees and in his back that things are, are breaking down. We have had Dr. Andrew look at him before and we have used a few different types of medications, but last week he's just deteriorated. So I think he's, he's going to go down again trying now. Trying to go actually. down now. Yeah. We'll just let him get comfy again. So we'll just let him settle. Over the last couple of years, we have tried a few things with Monty to make him as comfy as possible. He's been on joint supplements and injections. I was hoping today we'd be able to come up with something else to help. But he looks so uncomfortable today that I think, unfortunately, this might be the end. Oh, Monty. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Rachel and Nurse Alex are trying again to sedate Wrigley Ralph for all important x-rays on his front legs. Come on, boy. Ralph is not so happy with the sedation, so we are just going to be really calm with him, take it slowly, and at the end of the day, he's a really good boy for these things. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, dear. I think we got it. With the battle to sedate the uncooperative youngster finally over... Good night, Ralphie. Rachel can begin taking scans of Ralph's legs to try to find out why he's been limping. So I'm going to be looking in the x-rays for any abnormalities or any changes from the normal, but specifically panosteitis. So that's the main thing I'm going to be looking for in Ralph's case. 
Panosteitis is basically what we call growing pains. So it's a condition that we see in puppies um, aged anywhere from about five to 18 months and specifically in large breed with really fast growing bones, which is exactly what Ralph is. X-ray. So I'm basically looking for changes in the consistency, texture and density of the bones in this area here along the long bones. So I certainly think he might have some signs here of panosteitis, especially in this ulna, more so than the humerus and the radius. Other things we could be looking at, are obviously conditions like hip dysplasia or elbow dysplasia need to be considered as well. Rachel now wants to x-ray Ralph to see if there are abnormalities in the young puppy's pelvis and hip region. X-ray. So you can see here on both of his hips there, that should be a really nice round ball and it's a little bit flattened on this side. That hip should be a really nice ball and socket and you can see only probably about half of that ball of the hip is really sitting in that socket. So classic signs of hip dysplasia. And could be causing some of the lameness changes that we're seeing. So I think he's probably got a combination of a few things going on here. Good morning. Wakey, wakey. Sadly, Ralph's hip issues at such a young age could mean the onset of premature arthritis for the playful and lovable puppy. Yeah, I know. He is a breed that is prone to hip problems, which is a bit of a shame for Ralph, but unfortunately very common in some breeds and Labradors being one of them. Probably nothing to do with the signs the owners have been seeing, given that was in the front legs and his hips are in his back legs, but definitely worth discussing with the owners today. Come here. You're gonna wake up for me? You're even cuter when you're asleep. You can see he also doesn't lift his head very much, so he has his head down and he looks a bit tucked up in the abdomen. Absolutely. So that generally is a sign that they're in a fair bit of discomfort. Yeah. On a farm near Ulladulla, Andrew has been assessing the declining health of 17-year-old bull Monty with his concerned owner, Selena. I don't want him suffering. I don't let animals suffer. I think he does seem really, really sore, unfortunately. Yeah. Selena tries to put on a brave face, but she definitely is a softy inside. She wants to do the right thing by Monty and make him comfortable and free of pain. I really feel for her knowing that she's gonna to have to make a really difficult decision today. Because we've tried the anti-arthritis medication already, the joint supplements, the ones that we put in the food. Yeah. I know you don't want your pets to suffer at all like that. And so yeah. I think the only other option we could consider would be euthanasia. It's never an easy time, like you know, yeah. definitely. I think the best way of looking at it is the last kind thing that you can actually do for him. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, we knew I think... we were getting closer and that was the last trial. Yeah, that? sure. And he didn't get better. He didn't really it. get better and I think that's where we're heading. Okay. Yeah. It is very sad, but in a positive, I can actually say he spent 17 years with us. He's had a wonderful life and I can make that decision as sad as it is. He's come to the time to say goodbye. Come on, mate, you know. Selena's husband, Brad, arrives to help the much loved family pet and begin the process of putting an end to his suffering. Give it a go, hey, sweetie. Good boy. Always been a good boy. Yeah. Yeah, I think as hard as it is, I think you're making the right decision. Yeah. The first thing I will do will be to give Monty a sedative into the tail vein. That will make Monty much more relaxed and then Monty will actually lie down on the right. ground. It's all right, man. Right. Then we'll be able to give the main injection, which is an overdose of anaesthetic that makes the heart stop and he will just fall asleep really, really quickly. Okay, we're in the vein now. Because he's a decent sized bull. I'll just get you to stand back, Selena, if Brad's got him. I just don't want you to get hurt at all. You're right there. Yeah. If he starts to go down, you just look after his head. We'll just give him a few seconds, Brad, and we'll see how he goes. Probably getting a little bit more wobbly now. Yeah. Starting to kick in, yeah. Here we go, okay, just watch yourself there. Good boy. Being a vet, euthanasia is actually a big part of my job on most days. 
This one is different though. Selena, I do consider it like a part of the family and knowing what's about to happen really does make me pretty upset. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> I know, you're right. You're doing the right thing. Yeah, I know, I know, I know exactly. Doesn't make it any better no. though, I know. Good boy. Good oh boy. It's all right, mate. You okay? Yes. Andrew is putting an end to the ailing 17-year-old's incurable arthritic pain. He won't feel anything, I promise. He's just going to drift off to sleep. Bull heaven. Okay. Yeah, pretty peaceful way to go. Though. Yeah, sure. very peaceful. Okay. A much nicer way for a family pet. Yeah. It's had a good life. Yeah. No more suffering, Monty. Yeah, for sure. Good night, old friend. There you go, sweetie. It is very sad. Myself, in my job as a vet nurse, I deal with this every day. But when it happens to one of your animals, it's a reminder of how people feel every day. You're right. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Yeah, no. You did well. All right. Thanks Thank so much. Yeah. <laughs> Great job. Nice. Beautiful. I've lost two really good dogs in two weeks as well, so it's all, yeah, it's just all a bit too much actually. Oh, Monty. No more knocking the trees down. I know it's really important for Selena and Brad to be with Monty when he takes his last breaths. I know how much Selena loves Monty and I can definitely see her tearing up in the corner of my eye when I'm doing the procedure, but Monty is at peace and it's, I think it's a really nice fitting end for such a great life. Hey buddy, mum and dad are here. Back at the clinic, Rachel's young patient, Ralph, is awake after x-rays to find out why he's been limping. Come on. His loving owners, Deb and John, are anxiously waiting to hear the results of the scans on their five-month-old Labrador. Oh, you're excited. This way. Come on. Oh, look who it is. Oh. Hello, how are you going? Hi, you good. You just start to worry, so I think it's enjoyable having them, but now we've got to go through this process and get some results and where we are. All right. <laughs> now, first up, Ralph is a very good boy today. <laughs> and you got lots of cuddles from everyone, weren't you? You're a bundle of energy. <laughs> Betty keeps you on your toes at home. <laughs> so look, we've taken the x-rays and we have found what looks like some evidence of panosteitis. It's a condition that happens in larger breed, young, growing puppies. And it's sometimes referred to as growing pains because it occurs when the bones are really growing quickly. The good news is that it's generally something that will go away with a, within a few weeks. So he might, yeah, he might be lame on and off for maybe three or four weeks um, and we'll manage that with some pain relief, anti-inflammatories. What about walks? Should we reduce the walks? Look, I would if he's sore. So I don't think you necessarily need to if he's having a good day, if he's feeling like he's got lots of energy, I think you're right to walk him. So these are the anti-inflammatories I'm gonna put him on. So he may not need them all the time. He sort of seems sore, maybe go for a few days. The other thing we did find was that he does unfortunately have some degree of, of hip dysplasia. What that means is that there's a higher chance of him developing arthritis as he gets a little bit older, earlier than he would if he had perfectly normal hips. And it may mean that you do see signs of lameness in his back legs. We're not going to do anything about that now. He may never have much of an issue with them, but if we do see an issue in them down the track, that's something we'll deal with then. And that can just be a matter of things like joint supplements or pain relief. But then there are surgical options as well. So things like total hip replacements can be done in really severe cases. So I think that's everything I need to tell you. Do you have any other questions or is that all pretty clear? No, it's good, yeah. Pretty clear? All right, beautiful. Deb and John took the news well. I think they were pleased to hear that the lameness they've been seeing wasn't anything too serious and something that's gonna get better with time. I think they were a little bit more concerned about the findings of hip dysplasia, which is a shame, but overall they were happy that their little boy is pretty well and he's gonna be okay. Thank See you later, you. Ralph. Come on. See you, boy. <laughs> Thank you. Don't wanna go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs>
Come on. <laughs> See you later. Bye. I feel relief. Now that we understand what the problem is, and then hopefully now we can go forward and treat Ralph. So overall, we think we made the right decision on coming here and getting it investigated. Come on, mate. As Ralph heads home, Sandy is arriving at the Ulladulla Clinic with an unusual challenge for Andrew. Good boy. Hi, Selena. How are you? Good, Maggie. How are you? Good. I'm just here to get Buddy's DNA done today. Great. Would you like to just take a seat and yep. let Andrew know you're here? Thank you. OK, come on, bud. Good boy. I was told he was a Shih Tzu cross toy poodle. As if that is his breed. It's too long in the body, he's too big. So I want a DNA test done to find out what he really is. G'day Sandy. Hi Andrew. How, How are you going? Come, come on in. Come on buddy. Come Hello. On. Come on mate. I'll just pop him up on the table. Okay. How's he been going? He's good Andrew. Why I've brought him in today yeah. is when I walk in, people ask me what breed he is because they Confused about the colouring of him for a start. It's very unique. Yeah. <laughs> no writing colour he is actually. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit unusual. And, and when I tell them what I was told by the breeder, he's a Shih Tzu cross toy poodle. Okay. They start laughing. Oh, that's because, not very nice. Because if he was, he should be only weighing in at six, seven kilos. Yeah, sure, but he's a fair and bit bigger. <laughs> not as long yeah. as what he is. Yeah. And he's weighing in at ten point nine kilos now. Oh wow. Sure. So I'd like to know. What what he actually is. Oh, we can certainly... As long as he's not a Saint Bernard or Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> he might be. He yeah. be. Either a very small Saint Bernard or yeah. a very big Shih Tzu. Yeah. <laughs> Sandy's one of my favourite regular customers. She always makes me laugh and Buddy is a unique little character, but it really upsets Sandy. I can tell when people laugh at her or him for what breed he is. If you really just want to know. I do want to know. Yeah, let's I really do, it. do. Yeah, great. I can't stand being laughed at all the time. Oh, fair I, enough, Sandy. No I'm worries, giving we don't want information. That. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the good news is that now we can offer something to help. Oh, so great. there is a DNA test, which is really accurate, actually. So we take a little bit of blood from Buddy. Okay. And then we send it off to a laboratory in the USA. Comes back with a nice family tree. Oh, goes back to the great grandparents and it will say okay. exactly what he is. Good. DNA testing is definitely becoming more popular with animals. Some people want it for medical reasons, and others, like Sandy, just really want to know what breed they have. Sandy totally adores Buddy. You can tell the love they have between them. So it's great that I can finally get to the bottom of it. I hope that he's a Shih Tzu cross poodle. What do they call a cross between a poodle and a Shih Tzu? Well, my <laughs> idea would have to be a shit poo. Shit poo? Wow. <laughs> yes. Fair enough. Well, we're about to find out. Good boy, bud. Good boy. Today, Sandy is back at the clinic to find out the results of recent DNA tests on her dog, Buddy. I feel really good when I find out what he's supposed to be. Real good. <laughs> On their regular walks, Buddy attracts lots of attention and also lots of differing opinions on what his breed might be. There you go, that's a boy. So Sandy's hoping the tests will finally solve the mystery. Good boy. Yeah, a lot of the friends are having bets now on what he could be, so there's either going to be big money to pay out or it won't be. I'll still love him no matter what he is. G'day, Buddy. <laughs> Come on, mate. Here we go. <laughs> Come on, mate. Sandy really loves Buddy and she really wants to know what he is. I think the results will be a surprise for her. I've got some good news okay. for you. <laughs> Hit me with it. I've got to the bottom of it. Okay. And you were actually totally right. He's half St. Bernard and half Great Dane. <laughs> Better not be. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> I'll show you the chart and we'll okay. find out. All right, thanks, Andrew. So this is Buddy's family tree okay. and what the chart shows is that it follows the whole family tree. Right. So it comes back with Buddy's parents 
and then the grandparents, and then all the way back to the eight great grandparents. Oh, heavens above. And he's exactly yeah. half miniature poodle. Miniature. Yep, and half American show Shih Tzu. Oh, beautiful. Okay. okay. So, uh, the miniatures definitely bigger than a toy, isn't Yeah, it? they are bigger, so, and that's what gives him his decent size gotcha. as well. He's that not is. a tiny little thing, yeah. but I think he's a bit more robust than, yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's well, what he is. that explains your size, mate. And now in future, anyone that questions it, you can I give can... them a bit of paper. <laughs> yeah. Say he's miniature, okay. not no. a toy. Yeah, that's it. Oh, thank you so much, no, you're very welcome. It's been worthwhile getting it done. Mystery solved. Yeah. No exactly, worries. thank you. You're welcome. Well, buddy, there you go. We've got the answer. <laughs> thank you. Pleasure. Dealing with clients like Sandy really is the best part of my day. I love her energy, her humour. She adores animals and you can tell she's happy with the results. Well, that certificate is yours. Oh, thank you so much, <laughs> one, Andrew. One to go to the framer. <laughs> yes. Okay, and at least I think it was worth doing, definitely. I do. For your own peace of mind. I feel much better knowing now. Got a bit of clarity about yeah, everything, so that's good. no worries. We well both done. know, no more jokes. Yeah. No more jokes, that's it, for sure. <laughs> thank you so much, Andrew. You're welcome, pleasure. That's great. I'll take right. this on my walks with me. Yeah. And I can show them. <laughs> Strap it to his back. <laughs> No That's right. Okay, see you, Sandy. Thank you so see much. See you, buddy. Good okay, boy, mate. Thank you. No worries. Good boy. A few days later, Cindy's pathology tests showed the lump Andrew removed, thankfully, was not cancerous. The five year old sheep rejoined her flock following surgery and recovered well. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.